Dominic in California, you are on the line with Jimmy and Matt. Welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Peachy. Productive. Uh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I thought I, Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I was going to call and uh, answer the question you have posted. Why do you believe in God? Good. Can you can you and, start with uh, which God? Well, I grew up Jehovah's Witness, and for a long time, I really believed it. I, I believed it until I was about 10. And one day they translated the Bibles or updated them. And I didn't know why. And I asked why. And the, uh, the reason they gave me basically was they were dumbing them down to make them easier for people to understand. And that didn't sit right with me. And so I asked the question. If this is if they're translating the Bible now again, how many times has the Bible actually been translated? And uh, what is the original source material that the Bible is based on? And it wasn't until many years later I got the answer, and basically uh, I found that the the God of the Bible is just polytheistic deities based in Mesopotamia. And when I found that out, I'll. A lot of uh, things went around my mind. I guess you could say it was really a Dominic. I think you might be answering the question: but, Which God uh, do you not believe in now? Uh, and uh, Matt's question was: right, Which God but, do you believe in? I'm wondering if we can, before whatever story or whatever, uh, uh, what God are we engaging with today? Yeah, just tell me what God we're talking about, and then prove it. Yeah. So basically, I discovered that God. It's basically just uh, everything around us, everyone, all the trees, all the fish, all the clouds, what, whatever you can think of that exists in the 3D universe is actually a part of God. And it's just basically like a, a fractal of God that's made manifest physically. Well, and what, hang on just, just one second, because I'm, I'm happy for you to to try to prove this. The problem is when you say that God is everything, we already have a word for that. That word is everything. And what does calling everything God add to everything? So I'm looking for the specific properties of God that make it not a complete waste of time to say, oh, I could just say, hey, look at everything. But what I mean is look at God. So what does God add to that? All right, well, uh, everything is not just limited to the 3D physical universe. There is a realm beyond it, and this realm you could essentially call heaven. Based on my research, these realms are essentially higher dimensions, and the uh, dimension that the creator resides in is either the 11th or the 13th. I don't know exactly which one. But either way, um, it's from here that it said the creator's light literally shines down. And of course, it's not down. It's just really the only way we can imagine it. Um, the creator's light shines down through the lower dimensions. And this light is essentially uh, pieces or pieces of consciousness that are the creator, that the creator divides itself into so that it, it uh, can experience the physical universes that it's created. Dominic, it sounds like you're Dominic, it sounds way. like you're reading something. What are what are you reading from? What are you citing when you say uh this is where it's coming from? Well, it's really a number of different um religious beliefs that think this, like Kabbalah. Okay, so okay, so where does the thirteenth or eleventh dimension, where do you get that from? Well, in in Kabbalah, it is thought that that God resides in the eleventh dimension. But I've also heard from other sources. Uh, I think the Egyptians all thought that God resided, or the all encompassing consciousness of everything resided in the thirteenth. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know uh, but, so I don't know how. Uh, uh, hang, hang, hang on. I, I have loads of questions because virtually nothing you've said makes sense. And I don't mean it doesn't make sense in the sense that it's gobbledygook. I understood the words. It's when you say 
God is everything. God is the trees. God is uh, the fish. Um, I'm assuming God are all is all of the particles between the three the, the trees and the fish. Um, but then you say God doesn't. Or God resides in the eleventh or thirteenth dimension. So if God's in the eleventh or thirteenth dimension, first of all, I don't know how you you or anybody else made that determination. We have. I'm not aware of any other dimensions. I'm not aware of any way to investigate any other dimensions. Um, it, you know, I, I love intergalactic planetary, uh, and you know that that song's right there in the new Marvels trailer, so it's it's really cool. But I don't know how anybody can investigate any of that, and I don't know how somebody can say God is in the eleventh or thirteenth dimension, but God is also a fish. That doesn't make sense to me. So when you said based on your research. You found that God is here. What research can the rest of us do to reach the same conclusion? Well, there's a lot. Um, one of the things we could look into is something like the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, which states the uh, the divine uh, hermetic principle that is present everywhere, which is as as above, so below, which is basically so, that uh, everything. So, hang on. Every, so when I when I ask what what investigation or research we can do, pointing to an old writing isn't research on on reality. It's research on what somebody else believed about reality. Okay, well, I did recently come across scientific research that sort of supports what I'm talking about, although since I really recently came across it, I'm not... Uh, fully educated in the subject, so I'll just briefly describe it. But basically, there's a, a scientist named Michael Persinger. I don't know if you've heard of him. But he studies brain, the brains in neuroscience. And um, one of the things he wanted to prove or look into was physical or uh, spiritual experiences that people have. So if someone claims they saw Jesus and it was so real or people having a death, a near-death experience and claiming that their body was, or having some sort of out-of-body experience. He looked into these things, and what he found was <clears throat> these, these uh, experiences are actually caused by certain parts of the brain when they experience certain type of stimulation. And the parts of the brain that it affects are the... Uh, the temple region and the frontal region of the brain. And what happens is well, the, um, he, he uh, created in a lab, he put on some type of uh, helmet connected to electricity on their heads, and he uh, sent waves straight to that part of the brain, the temple. And he the people who were subjected to this he did this over a course of about, uh, I'm going to say about 20 years. So there's a lot, he did a lot of experiments on this. But the people were subjected in a dark room, blindfolded. And what they were describing was essentially what you would think of a, as spiritual experiences. See, and what he was I, basically going on to... Dominic, hang on. What he basically... What? Go ahead, Matt. So... I was going to say what, what this basically... No, Dominic, to, Dominic. Uh, I said, go ahead, Matt, not man. Maybe you heard, go ahead, man. Oh, uh, I, I said Matt, yeah, so I no did. worries. No worries. It's all good. Dominic, or, or, or Matt, go ahead, please. Okay. So when I asked how we could know about God being in the 12th or 13th dimension, or, or sorry, 11th or 13th, you know, I guess I guess we just skip the 12th. Um, what we need is some definitions and some research that show that in fact there are 11 or 13 dimensions and that in fact there is good reason to believe that there's a being that inhabits one of those i don't know what it means um i don't know how space-time ties to the 11th or 13th dimension and those other things and then the first thing you did was point to an emerald tablet which is some esoteric writing from I don't know which centuries, uh, but then you point to Michael Persinger, who's somebody who basically did an attempt of, at a bunch of research on uh, paranormal things, but has like he has no 
peer-reviewed studies that demonstrate the truth of anything uh, in the paranormal. As a matter of fact, the entire history of humanity, not a single paranormal claim has ever withstood the scrutiny of proper scientific investigation. So it seems that what you've done is you went out and found... Sorry, what? I was going to say, that's not true that he did not come under... Uh certain types of investigation because his work was actually utilized by the CIA. Okay. With the um, man named, stop it. Uh, stop interrupting me. Stop interrupting me, especially with really silly things, because what I t pointed out was that there has been no peer reviewed confirmation of anything paranormal ever, whether or not somebody in the CIA decided to point to or use or explore something in somebody else's paranormal research is irrelevant. I'm trying to figure out if something is true, not whether or not the CIA bothered to investigate. The CIA, by the way, dabbled in all kinds of paranormal things, and they were fooled by charlatans. I'm trying to figure out what the truth is. And so when you point to somebody who was a paranormal researcher, who never, ever, 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 like everybody else on the planet, never demonstrated any truth to any paranormal claim, how does that demonstrate that God resides in the 13th or 11th dimension and showers down pieces of consciousness through lower dimensions? I'm not aware that there are higher or lower dimensions. I'm not aware that there is a God. I've seen no evidence for this. You seem to have developed a, hey, the Bible's bullshit, but I really want some way to find a, a good way to believe in God. And here's all these old things from various different religions where people said a bunch of things, um, and it doesn't quite make sense, and it's not really testable. And now I'm going to go and find some paranormal researchers and see if I can make their research fit my conclusions. None of this is science. None of it is scientific. None of it is demonstrable. What reason would any rational person have to believe that God inhabits either the 11th or 13th dimension? Well, first of all, that dude's not a paranormal researcher. As I said, he's a neuroscientist, and his research actually demonstrated that those spiritual experiences are just literally hallucinations of the brain. But what he did discover through his research, which is what I was going to get into, is that the brain is essentially a magnet, the same as the Earth. It has a magnetic field. Our brain has a magnetic field. And what I was talking about with the CIA is they actually have a man named Ingo Swan who actually was able to, uh, without actually physically being there, just using his mind, communicate with other people. No, he couldn't. Envision no, he couldn't. So Ingo Swan well, is a fraud. So, you know, Ingo Swan is a fraud who has never demonstrated his powers under any sort of uh, scientific testing. Well, why would he? Well, there used to be a million-dollar yeah. incentive to uh, do so, among other things. Yeah. See, the thing yeah, is, that. Dominic, what it seems is that you don't have right now, Maybe, maybe we can fix that, you don't have a way of telling the difference between what's real and what's not real. No. I, I have the same level of telling what's real and what's not real as, as anyone else. A apparently not, as you don't seem to know that Ingo Swan is a fraud, and you don't seem to know what scientific testing is, and you don't seem to know what independent verification is of a demonstrable effect. You, you seem to go out and read stuff and say, hey, Michael Persinger was a neuroscientist. Well, he was interested in neurotheology, but he was a paranormal researcher. He researched all sorts of untestable, unidentifiable claims about time travel and you know a, a number of different things. Um, while he can do some testing on neuropsychology, um, that doesn't in any way demonstrate the answer to the question that I started with, yes, he's got his God helmet and stuff. The question here is, how can any rational observer reach the conclusion that God exists in either the 11th or 13th dimension? That is the last time I'm going to ask you the same question and let you avoid it. You're either going to answer that question or we're going to move on. 
Well, I was going to get to that, and you can look to things like sacred geometry and the flower of life. Which no, is, sir. Uh, no, sir. There's no, you don't get so. First of all, sacred geometry isn't sacred. Is there no bullshit that you don't believe? What disproves sacred geometry exactly? No, no, it's not about disproving it. It's about proving its claims. There's been never in the history of the world has there been a paranormal, supernatural demonstration of anything well there's not going to be because okay then you then you then you're admitting then you're admitting then you are admitting that, that, that no rational person could believe these things because there can't be a demonstration what's the dominic you just said it will never happen because scientists don't have the proper philosophy to prove it right so what is the proper philosophy well first of all they should uh, start accepting the fact that consciousness is no. not just what is the proper the philosophy is the question D Dominic here's the thing we keep letting you just go on whatever direction as an interlocutor you cannot be trusted at all you do not go the direction of the conversation you do not offer proof you just start rambling about what I suspect are things that you thought were cool when you were high and boy I ramble about those things too so Dominic if we're going to continue we're going to ask you series of questions and you're going to give concise and precise answers. And you're only going to answer the questions that we're asking, not some, not go off on whatever tangent. Now, if you don't understand the nature of the question, because when you said they don't have the right philosophy, you didn't actually mean anything uh, significant. You can say, you know, pass, or I don't know how to answer that question. And we'll try and make it easier for you. But you said scientists don't have the right philosophy. Philosophies are things. They have labels and names. Which philosophy is the correct philosophy that would be able to prove a god? Uh, well, first of all, accepting that man is not or is not the arbiters of truth. Okay, so so we're like not going to answer my question. Is what we're going with? Which philosophy is the correct philosophy that proves there is a god? What is the philosophy? As far as, I'm going to make as far as, as, far, as, as far as established, established academia philosophies, whatever you want, that, it, what, it that, just anything that satisfies that question. I, I like I just said when they come to understand what real morals are and uh, update their okay. Stance what is on the morals? philosophy which That's outlines literally, real that is morals? Literally that is literally the first time you've uttered the word moral in this entire conversation. Right. How dare you fucking pretend that you're repeating something? Yeah, yeah, like I said. Let, all right, I'm going to just take you on a brand new line because you can't apparently be trusted with this line of questioning. Earlier, you referred to God as a creator, and he said it's everything inside the universe and outside of the universe, correct? Yes. Okay, so the question is, before this universe existed, did that creator still exist? Well, I think that the creator... Yes the or no, it will work has... just fine. Before the universe was, in your, I suppose, uh, uh, yeah. belief... Yeah. Yes. Okay. How did you come to the conclusion that there was a creator which preceded the universe? What evidence do you have for that? Because the universe is full of law and order, cause and effect, and that could not have just, the level of precise order and cause and effect could not have just been done randomly. How do you know that? Because it is too orderful. The, the <laughs> chances that, no, it, that sir, it would have- Dominic, no, Dominic, the, Dominic. Okay, actually, no, go ahead. Give me the chances. You were just going to finish with the chances are what? are beyond point point or point zero 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 how did you determine that whatever. how did you determine a mathematical probability that the laws of physics in this universe would be what they are well because there are things that govern behavior and the consequences for behavior of our actions are always proportionately delivered hey dominic ask me That's what my favorite true. color is 
just do what it. Your subjective favorite ask me color what, is. Yeah, yeah ask me what my favorite color is. Just ask. With, just do it. Has nothing. Has nothing. Just do to it. Do with what I'm just talking do it. about. Just do it, Dominic. I'm going to demonstrate okay. something to you. Ask me what my favorite color is. Okay. What's your favorite color? One time, I went on a hike and I saw a beaver. This is what it is like to talk to you, Dominic. It is painful. You don't understand the substance of what you are describing. As far as the probability of the universe, we don't have any evidence that it could have been any other way. We have no idea what the probability is, but because the universe exists, it, there's much more evidence for it being 100% likely that it's going to be this than there is uh, this sort of thing you've made up, this less than 0. 0.000 whatever thing. You are repeating the most shallow forms of apologetics from different religions, and you aren't actually engaging any of the questions as they are asked of you. And then you're acting like we're wasting your time and you're saying things like, like I already said, and then you say something brand new. Dominic, do you have a good reason anybody should believe in the creator God, which preceded other than the fine tuning argument, which you believe is correct because it is so incredulous, you are so incredulous that you can't conceive of anything. Therefore, you will take any answer that any charlatan has given you over just being able to say, I don't know, because I live in a ginormous fucking universe that's all, and then on Earth, we've only been doing science for a couple hundred years, and it would be fucking insane of me to think we would have all of the answers by now, and anything we don't answer, I can just go with, it was some guy. So do you have a good reason the, the anybody fact, should believe in your guy? The fact that you put uh, human progress and just... Uh, Matt, I don't care. Do you want me to continue this call? I can unmute them if you want. I haven't, I've been playing chess for the last five minutes. I haven't cared since since it became obvious that no. Dominic was not going to be able to address any of the questions that we've asked. Yeah, Dominic. It, uh, it's what, incredibly frustrating to give somebody the first spot on the show because yeah. they claim that they know God is real because of a combination of history, philosophy, science, occultic principles, and mythology. We can't get a definition of a God other than God is everything, including God is a tree, God is a fish. Uh, trees and fish aren't in the 11th and 13th dimension, but evidently God is in the 13th dimension. Yeah. Uh, that he got this from Kabbalah, from the Imlid tablet, from Michael Persinger, from Ingo Swan, um, from a parade of pseudoscientific claims and all we have done repeatedly is say how can anybody how can a rational person demonstrate the truth of what you're saying well then when he said they can't uh because scientists don't start with the right philosophy they don't they, and then and then let me ramble on a side note about morality and all kinds of that you know, humans aren't the arbiters of truth no reality is the arbiter of truth and reality dominic says that you believe a bunch of things for which you do not and cannot demonstrate a good reason. Well, actually, I can demonstrate a good reason. Then do it. Then uh, why did you waste, yeah. why did you waste, why did you waste the last 20 minutes of this fucking call if you can do it? Well, I've called and talked talk to you about the reasons before. The, the biggest reasons in my opinion, come down to the fact that there is a, an objective moral standard for the way. No, there's not. Things like human beings behave. No, there's yes, not. There is. No, there's not. So See, if, so I, if every, I oh, shut so up. If every I single win, time you say, every single time you say, yes, there is, I can say, no, there's not. And we'll never get anywhere. If you think there's an objective moral so standard for everything, I, you, you need to stop. You need to fucking prove it and not just assert it. We don't get to truth so I, by assertions, you interrupting monstrous jackass. Prove it. So if I sneak into your house right now and crack a lamp on your head, is that right? Nope. Is that objectively right or wrong? It's not objectively either. I'm giving you my assessment of the consequences of that act with respect, with respect to my positions on morality. It's funny, Dominic, because you've just proven the thing that truly drives you the most is, once again, your incredulity. Because in your mind, well, that's clearly wrong because I feel very much like it's wrong, so that must heighten it to the level of objective. So, Dominic, my last piece of advice as we let you go is to eat lots of chocolate as it will improve your experience as you continue to sniff your own farts. 
Goodbye, sir. Jesus Christ. Doesn't exist in my opinion. So if you disagree, well, doesn't exist alive today and isn't the whatever. I don't know whether or not he ever existed. Uh, now, if you disagree, to be fair. To be fair, I mean, so you're Jimmy's steering today. So I, I couldn't put Dominic. I, I went to go click the mute button, but I decided not to do that because because Jimmy's uh, steering. But I apologize. The, the thing the thing to remember is we would, we're happy to have people call in and present their case. But there are some calls where I feel that it is uh, unfair and cruel for us to allow someone who is so clearly divorced from the facts of reality to continue going on at length. When, when we ask a question, we tend to give people time initially to, hey, define your terms and say what you're going to say. But at some point, it gets to you're not answering anything that we're asking. And I don't know if it's because you just don't understand. If you're going to say, hey, hey, Jimmy, what's your favorite color? Beaver. Sorry, it's red. Red. If somebody were to ask what's my favorite color, I'd have to say, I don't know. I, I like different colors at different times. I don't know that I have a favorite. On, on Twitch streams, people would ask me, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? What's your favorite game? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite? And it's annoying when they ask that to me because... I'm evidently weird because I don't necessarily have favorites like that. And so that's a question that's legitimately difficult for me to answer. But if someone were to say, hey, is the universe's age closer to 14 billion years than it is to 6,000 years? My answer is yes. Now, even though we may be getting ready to double the age of the universe based on some new research, which would mean that it's technically no, uh, the current best model shows that that's true, and I'm accepting that. If somebody, if I were to say, hey, I believe something, and somebody said, wow, uh, why do you believe that? Okay, I would do my best to say, here are the reasons, be they good or bad. But I don't need to give my life fucking story. And I don't need to to, to talk about how there was a tablet written centuries ago and some Jewish mystic mythics um, had some ideas. And then there's this neuroscientist researcher who had some stuff. And I'm going to grab things from all these different things and say that God is everywhere, including being fish and trees and in the 11th and 13th dimensions. Because what's really happening there is... Dominic has a fully untestable hypothesis. And this is what we do as humans to protect our delusions. This is what religions do. They just are a little bit more adept at it than Dominic or the average person who tries to just do it on their own. It's, I need to believe something. I'm going to make up a story that we can't test. And then I'm going to point to all the things that I think are consistent with my story and claim that those are supportive of my story while I ignore things that are inconsistent with that story. That confirmation bias, um, that process of shielding a, a belief from investigation. I don't know how anybody could demonstrate that an 11th dimension exists um, or what that means. I get it when you get into quantum mechanics and stuff, they start talking about dimensions. Like I was waiting for him to use the word quantum so I could just vomit. Yeah. Uh, but I get that they'll use that, but I'm not convinced that quantum physicists are using the 11th dimension in the same way that Dominic is as a realm where some consciousness could be raining down fragments of it. But even if it were, that's still an untestable, unfalsifiable right now claim. And you might as well be saying, hey, I found ghosts. They live on Mars 500 feet below the surface in a chamber that only allows them to project an image of themselves to certain people who are tuned to it from time to time. And even if you were going to go to Mars and dig down to that chamber, it would appear empty to you because they're not detectable within that chamber. And then, and then you say, wait a minute, are you saying that you just detected the undetectable? I mean, Dominic is, it literally did that. Yeah. Dominic 
says there's no way to confirm this, yet I've confirmed it. Dominic also demonstrated that he has a personal relationship with conviction equaling objectivism, which is something I left behind when I left the Mormon church. I'm, uh, I'm happy to have done away with it. Oh. Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and the rumors are true, Forrest Valkai is in fact a hostage in my basement. If you would like to contribute to his freedom one day, you can do so by supporting us over on Patreon or becoming a channel member. There are specific tiers for specific shows or the channel at large. You can also send us super thanks. Those are great. You can like, comment, and subscribe. Also, fudge the algorithm. Go to one of these things. The algorithm doesn't matter. It thinks it knows you better than we do. Better than you do? I know you better, Hank. There's a bunch of people named Hank. I just freaked way out. Okay, go to one of these.